Now the lecture and answer the formative test 1, listening 2.4.2H. Formative test 2A. What's on this week? Well, the impressed theater is proud to present a funny Neil Simon play, plus a suit on April 11th to 13th. The show starts at 7 p.m. at St. Mary's Church Hall in Colchester. Tickets are one dollar. The Acme Jazz Club presents Jasmine at the Colchester Jazz Club on Saturday, April 13. The show starts at 7 p.m. at the Townhouse on West Stockwell Street. Tickets are one dollar and fifty cents. The students at the University of Isaac present the play The Hollow by Agatha Christie from April 9 to 15. The show begins at 8 p.m. and tickets are $3. Formative Test 2B Good morning, Indonesia. Welcome to IndoTV Indonesia. I am Lisa Peranginangin with today's program. We will start with CBN News this morning at 8 for half an hour. Cartoon Network will follow with the story of Drink the Little Dinosaur. For sport lovers, Star Sport will broadcast live from Miami, Tennis Master Series Nasdaq 100 open at 9 sharp this morning. At 9.30, Aladdin from the Disney Channel will accompany you for the next 30 minutes. Then, it's time for the National Geographic Channel with its Heroes of the Higher Frontier. Ultimate discovery from the Discovery Channel is next at 1 this afternoon, which will be followed by the Discovery Travel and Adventure Channel with its newest program called Secret at 2 for about one and a half hours. Next, AXN with Now and Then, Here and There. At 4.30, the Wild Thorn Berries. And at 5, ESPN will broadcast a live game of New York Yankees versus Tampa Bay Devils race. For you kids, once again the Disney Channel will show Tarzan at half past 6. Don't miss our movies tonight with HBO at 8 with Money Train and the Cinemax at 10 with Ghost Ship. Still more movies on cable TV tonight at 11 Star Movies will show Waterworld. Midnight is the time for Celine fans, live from Las Vegas. The opening night of her world tour. And at 1.30, we will have another news from Channel News Asia with its program Asia Tonight. Well, I'm sure you have been waiting for today's news in news this morning. I'm Lisa. Have a nice day. This is the end of Module 4, Listening to. Well, that was our discussion on Module 4 about interview. If you think you don't understand the materials, please replay this cassette and listen again. If you have understood it, you can continue to Module 5. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. We come to module 5. This module discusses about prose passages and consists of two topics that are divided into two units. Unit 1 discusses about comparison and contrast and on the second unit you can study cause and effect. Now let's discuss the first unit about comparison and contrast. Listening 2.5.1a Passage 1 John and Jim are twins. As most twins do, they have similar physical characteristics that make them look the same. Yet, these physical traits are not the only things that often make people confused. They also share the same interests, talents, and even non-physical characteristics. Both 
John and Jim like playing tennis. They play tennis almost every week, and they both good at it. Not only that, they also have such a big interest on music. John listens to a great deal of pop and classical music as well as Jim. John can play piano and Jim too. These rare likenesses amaze people most of that time. Moreover, after they learn that these two boys have the same dazzling personalities that make them much agreeable to their societies. Listening 2.5.1D, passage 2A. Although best friends, John and Jim are different from one another. They are mostly different in their personalities. John is a very extrovert person who enjoys meeting people and has chat with them, while Jim likes to stay away from people most of the time. It seems that Jim has his own world where he cannot easily share with others. Unlike Jim, who likes spending at home alone and do quiet activities such as reading, which has become Jim's main hobby for the past many years. Therefore, John enjoys sport very much since this field of interests allows him to socialize and meet more people, whereas Jim does not. The way they deal with difficult situations are also very much different. John is tended to be more temperamental than Jim. He gets mad easily when he meets difficult situations, and this often results in such a foolish problem solving. On the contrary, Jim seems to be much calmer. He does not react directly when he finds troubles. He will stay calm and take a deep breath while thinking of what should be done to overcome the troubles. The wide differences between these two people somehow make others wonder how these two different personalities can get along with each other. Listening 2.5.1c, passage 2b. All the best friends, John and Jim, are different from one another. They are mostly different in their personalities. John is a very extrovert person who enjoys meeting people and has chat with them. He likes attending gathering and parties and makes friends with new people he can meet in those kinds of events. He talks a lot and makes jokes every now and then. Because of these special characteristics, John is usually considered as a warm and familiar person. His love of being around people makes John love sports. Better than other fields of interest. For him, sport is an effective means to socialize. Nonetheless, John is not clever in dealing with difficult situations. He easily gets mad and makes foolish decisions when facing problems. Much on the contrary, Jim is somewhat introvert. He avoids parties and gatherings and would rather stay home to read books than going there. It seems that he has his own world where not many people can enter. He can get drawn in books for hours, forget things and any other activities that he can actually do. What is good about Jim is that he is very much analytical and calm. He does not react directly when he finds troubles. He will stay calm and take a deep breath while thinking of what should be done to overcome the troubles. The wide differences between these two people somehow make others wonder how these two different personalities can get along with each other. Listening 2.5.1D, passage 3. John and Jim are good friends. They like many of the same things, although sometimes they have differences. For example, both John and Jim like to fish. They fish a lot and spend much time at the fishing pond. Often, they go together on weekends and bring home many kinds of fish to fry or to roast. Furthermore, they also love sports. 
Both of them love playing tennis, although they don't play equally well. John plays tennis better than Jim, and he seems to have bigger interest on sport compared to Jim. Yet those things are not the only things that they usually enjoy together. They also fond of music, especially jazz and classics. Nevertheless, Jim is more prominent in it. He listens to a great deal of music and plays many musical instruments such as piano, guitar, and violin. Have you done all the exercises in Unit One, Module Five? If you do not get any problems in doing the exercises, then you've better to do the formative test one. If you find any problems in doing the exercises, it would be better for you to listen again before you do the formative test one. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Now listen to the passage four and answer the formative test one. Listening two point five point one e. This passage is only for questions number one to number four. Twins are generally characterized by their similarities, yet Bob and Bill might be an exception since they have more differences than similarities. It is not by chance that Bob is physically much more attractive. It is all because Bob pays a lot of attention to his appearance. He likes dressing up and goes to the gym to build his body. Not only that, his nice personality attracts not only women but also men. He also seems to be very much sociable, that makes even strangers feel comfortable having a chat with him. Unfortunately, he often makes use of this special characteristic for his own benefit, which sooner or later may change his good reputation. Contrast with Bob, Bill is a type of a person who is not likely to be popular. He is rather thin and has serious look. He makes not too many friends, but has several good friends with the same interests. He cannot adjust with new environment well, but he can be a good listener for others. He doesn't speak a lot, but he is unstoppable when he starts speaking about his subjects. Above of all, he is more reliable as a friend. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Now listen to the passage five and answer the formative test one, objective test, listening two point five point one f. This passage is only for questions number one to number five. Are you aware of striking similarities between two of the most popular U.S. presidents, Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy? A minor point is that the names Lincoln and Kennedy both have seven letters. Both men had their election legally challenged. Lincoln and Kennedy are both remembered for their sense of humor, as well as for their interests in civil rights. Lincoln became president in 1860, Kennedy in 1960. Lincoln's secretary was Mrs. Kennedy. Kennedy's secretary was Mrs. Lincoln. Neither the man took the advice of his secretary not to make a public appearance on the day on which he was assassinated. Lincoln and Kennedy were both killed on Friday in the presence of their wives. Both assassins, John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald, have fifteen letters in their names. 
and both were murdered before they could be brought to trial. Just as Lincoln was succeeded by a certain Democrat named Johnson, so was Kennedy, Andrew Johnson, Lincoln's successor, was born in 1808. Lyndon Johnson, Kennedy's successor, was born in 1908. And finally, the same Cation carried the bodies of both men in their funeral processions. Now listen to the passage 6 and answer the formative test 1. Listening 2.5.2G, this passage is only for questions number 6 to number 10. According to the Swiss psychiatrist Carl Gustav Jung, every person's personality can be placed somewhere on a scale running from extreme extroversion, it as an outgoing personality, to extreme introversion, it asked, a withdrawn personality. The typical extrovert is particularly fond of people and people-oriented activities. He is sociable, likes parties, has many friends, needs to have people to talk to, and does not like reading or studying by himself. The typical introvert, on the other hand, is a quiet, retiring sort of person, introspective, fond of books rather than people. Unlike the extrovert who craves excitement, takes chances, and is generally impulsive, the introvert shuns excitement, takes matters of everyday life with proper seriousness, and likes a well-ordered mode of life. Whereas the extrovert tends to be aggressive, and loses his temper easily, the introvert tends to keep his feelings under close control, seldom behaves in an aggressive manner, and does not lose his temper easily. The introvert is more reliable and less optimistic than the extrovert. The extrovert may often be subject to criminal or psychological behavior. In contrast to the introvert, who may exhibit neurotic tendencies. A further difference between the two involves the ability to remember. Studies have tended to show that the extrovert learns faster than the introvert, but in the end, remembers less. This is the end of Unit 1, Module 5, Listening 2. Have you answered all the questions in Formative Test 1? Excellent. Check all your answers with the key. If you find any problems in doing the formative test, it would be better for you to listen and answer the questions again. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Now we will continue to Unit 2 about cause and effect, listening 2.5.2a, exercise 1. Har, I have to apologize to you. Why? What for? I seems to have misplaced the book I borrowed from you. How did it happen? Well, my maid cleaned up my room yesterday, and she changed the arrangements of all my books. Afterwards, I couldn't find some of the books, including yours. Wow! Please, look for it again, and I really need it. Yes, I will. I promise. Listening 2.5.2b, Exercise 2 The traffic on Jalan Sudirman is usually very heavy. A lot of vehicles, cars, motorcycles, buses, pass the road every day on their way to and from workplaces. As a result, the level of pollution along that road is also very high, especially during rush hours, between 7 and 9 a.m. and between 4 and 7 p.m. 
Listening 2.5.2C, Exercise 3. The fishing industry is facing two big problems. First of all, overfishing. Too many fish are being caught every day with not enough replenishment. People, fishermen all over the world just catch the fish with only one thing in mind, to catch as many fish as possible so that they can get as much money as they can. They don't think that new fish need to be bred to replenish the ones they catch. If this continues, soon the seas will be empty of fish. The second problem is water pollution. Many oil tankers spill their oil when they get accidents on the sea. Consequently, the water is polluted and this pollution will be consumed by fish and other sea animals. Reports have shown that every year a lot of fish die because of water pollution. This in turn will endanger human beings, the consumers of fish meat. Listening 2.5.2D Exercise 4 During the Idul Fitri holiday, Malang turns into a very quiet town. Only a few vehicles pass the road and malls and supermarkets are not as crowded as usual. Since quite a lot of people living in Malang are students from other towns and most of them go home during the Eid holidays, the city then becomes very quiet and deserted. Many natives of Malang feel strange with this change, and once holidays are over, the students return to Malang. The natives feel at home again in the crowded street and noisy stores in the malls. Listening 2.5.2e, Exercise 5 You look very happy. Julia comments as Tina entering the room, looking very bright and cheerful in her red dress. I'm happy, answered Tina as she sits next to Julia. I just got a letter from the bank saying that my application has been successful. So, you are a bank employee now. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Have you understood the materials in cassette too? If not, please rewind this cassette and listen again. If you have understood, you can go on to cassette 3 to discuss the next materials. Listening 2.5.2F, Exercise 6 The continuous hot rain for the past week has caused floods in many parts of the country. Many people lost their homes and lands, and many school children couldn't go to school because their school buildings were damaged by the floods. This situation had made the people worried since the Eid holiday is coming and the people can't do their usual activities such as cooking, making or buying new clothes and repairing their homes. This year's Eid won't be too cheerful, it seems. Listening 2.5.2G, Exercise 7 Don't worry, be happy. Tomorrow there will be an exam at school and today I feel like a fool. I always play and never study. No wonder I have something to worry. Last exam I got a four. Mom said I had to study more. I made mom feel very sad. Oh, and I felt so bad. This time I'm going to study hard, so mom can feel very proud. I'm sure I will get a nine and I will feel so fine. Now I have nothing to worry. If I start to study, I will be very happy. Listening 2.5.2H, Exercise 8 
A woman was walking along a busy road one day. Then suddenly she saw a crowd of people in front of a tall building. They were all looking up at the roof of the building. The woman looked up too. Then she saw a young man at the edge of the tall balcony of the building. He was t u n s t e a d i l y He looked as if he was about to fall down. The woman grabbed the man next to her, and she screamed, "Please help that boy! He's going to fall down! Stop him!" But the man calmly answered, "It's just a film shooting, ma'am." Listening 2.5.2i exercise nine. City mouse and country mouse. One day, city mouse takes a bus to country to see his cousin, country mouse. The bus stops in front of a farm. Country mouse is waiting. Hello, cousin. I'm happy to see you," says country mouse. "Come into my little house." Soon, city mouse is not happy. "I'm hungry. There's no food, and it's cold here in the barn," he says. "Let's go to my apartment in the city. There's food and it's warm." Country mouse touches his cold nose. "Yes, let's go," he says. The two cousins take the bus to the city. After a while, city mouse says, "Here's our stop." They get off the bus and go into the apartment. There are milk and cheese on the table. City mouse and country mouse are happy, but before they can eat, a big cat comes in. The cat wants to eat them. They have to hide behind the refrigerator. Country mouse says, "Now I'm hungry, but a cat wants to eat me. I'm going back to the country." Listening 2.5.2J exercise 10. The motor car. In 1908, a man named Henry Ford made the first Model T for car. All the cars were made the same model and color. That made the costs lower. That's why Ford could sell his car cheaper than a horse. Now, the Ford factory uses robot. They do the same tasks as the workers, and the methods are still the same. The cost becomes cheaper and cheaper. Millions of people can now buy his cars, including people in Indonesia. Listening 2.5.2K exercise 11. Peter Pan. In a city far from Neverland, there was a family with three children. Their names were John, Michael, and Wendy. One day, Peter Pan met Wendy. He asked Wendy and her brothers to go to the Neverland with him, but they could not fly. Peter Pan. Sprinkled them with Tinker Bell's dust. Now they could fly to Neverland. In Neverland, the children met Captain Hook. He was a pirate who did not have a right hand. He used a hook as his right hand. That's why his name was Captain Hook. Listening 2.5.2 L Exercise 12. One morning, Nina saw her best friends Andrea, Bella, and Chica. "What are you doing?" asked Nina. "Chica is accompanying me to look for sandals," answered Andrea. "She has already bought one pair, and they are lovely. It's easy for her to find the right size since her feet are small, but my feet are big, so it's difficult to find my size." Then Nina looked at Bella's right ankle and asked, "Why is your right ankle bandaged?" "I sprained my ankle in the gym yesterday. Now I have to walk very slowly." On the way home, Nina met Mr. Handy. He took care of the city park. He was standing beside a new sidewalk, and he looked upset. Nina walked closer. Somebody jumped in the middle of this sidewalk while the cement was still wet," said Mr. Hundy. "Now it's ruined, and I have to repair this part again." Poor Mr. Hundy, Nina felt sorry for him. 
Listening 2.5.2M Exercise 13 Tina, Dina, Imran, and Said are talking about the sun eclipsed. Wow, did you see the sun eclipse yesterday? Was it a total eclipse? Yes, it was superb. I didn't watch it. I was sleeping at the time. Wow, you missed a beautiful view, Dean. I didn't watch it because I was taking a bath. I watched it on television. My friends and I were playing outside and my mother shouted at us. Why? Because she thought it was going to rain. The sky was getting dark. She wanted us to go inside. So how did you see the eclipse? I watched it through my bedroom window. Listening 2.5.2N Exercise 14 Today Mr. Grumpy came late to the office. He entered the office with a red face and rubbing his back. When his colleagues asked him, he answered angrily that he missed the bus. He came to the bus stop just when the bus was departing. He tried to run after it, but he tripped and fell down on his back. That was why he was rubbing his back when he entered the office. He was angry with himself and with the bus. Learning 2.5.20, Exercise 15 Mr. Santoso is the school librarian. He is very annoyed today when he sees what the students are doing in the library. A girl is singing while listening to a cassette. Two boys are chatting in a corner. Four girls are talking and giggling noisily. All of those students are doing forbidden things in the library. Consequently, Mr. Santoso is very annoyed. Listening 2.5.2p, exercise 16. The Butter Finger One day, my dad told me a story about his classmate, Kito, whom everyone called Butterfinger. Here is his story. When I was young, I had a friend, Gito. All my classmates called him Butterfinger. Why? Because he often dropped things. Like what? Once he dropped a tube of iodine in the school lab. Consequently, the lab floor became red. So we had to clean it all day. What else did he do? At home, he never washed the dishes. His mother didn't want him to wash because he often dropped the plates and glasses. How is he now? Well, now he is retired, but before that he worked as a bus driver so that he didn't have to drop anything. Listening 2.5.2 Key Exercise 17 Life in Jogja Malioboro is known as one of the famous tourist attractions in Jogja because we can find hundreds of street vendors along the street selling all kinds of souvenirs, handicrafts, and accessories. Malioboro is also known for its lesehan, having a meal or drink sitting on a mat on the sidewalk. It is especially popular with locals at night. On Saturday nights, Malioboro is very crowded. As a result, it is very difficult to find a parking place to cross the street or even to walk comfortably on the sidewalk. However, a lot of people still feel that they haven't visited Jogja if they haven't shopped in Malioboro. Have you done all the exercises in Unit 2, Module 5? If you don't get any problems in doing the exercises, you better to do the formative test too. Turn off your tape and go back to the module.
Listening 2.5.2R, Formative Test 2. Passage 1 is for questions number 1 to number 5. Many people are worried about what television has done to the generation of American children who have grown up watching it. For one thing, recent studies tend to show that TV stifles creative imagination. Some teachers feel that television has taken away the child's ability to form mental pictures in his own mind, resulting in children who cannot understand a simple story without visual illustrations. Secondly, too much TV too early tend to cause children to withdraw from real-life experiences. Thus, they grow up to be passive spectators who can only respond to action but not initiate it. The third area for concern is the serious complaint frequently made by elementary school teachers that children exhibit a low tolerance for the prestations of learning because they have been conditioned to see all problems resolved in 30 or 60 minutes on TV, they are quickly discouraged by any activity that promises less than instant gratification. But perhaps the most serious result is the impact of television violence on children who have come to regard it as an everyday thing. Not only does this increase their tolerance of violent behavior in others, but most authorities now concede that under certain conditions, some children will imitate antisocial acts that they witness on television. Listening to point 5.2s, point formative test 2. Passage 2 is for questions number 6 to number 10. Why is it that American working women complain about job discrimination? Statistics suggest that there is a basis for their grievances. According to recent figures compiled by the Women's Bureau of the U.S. Department of Labor, nearly 40% of all women of working age are in the labor force. Although the median education of all women is higher than that of their male counterparts, Women are highly concentrated in underpaid and manual jobs. 75% of all clerical workers are women. 55% of all service workers are women. 27% of all factory workers are women. Of the women with college degrees, 70% are working. Of this number, only 2% are executives, while 40% are employed in clerical, sales, or factory positions. The median income is only 51% of that of men. Only 25 states have laws requiring equal pay for equal work, and these laws are often circumvented by giving a woman a lesser title. In contrast, 43 states have laws which limit the number of hours a woman can work, usually eight, and thereby prevent women from earning overtime pay and promotions. Finally, while the percentage of women in the labor force increases, the income gap between male and female workers has been widening at the rate of half percent per year for the past 20 years. This is the end of Unit 2, Module 5, Listening 2. Have you answered all the questions in Formative Test 2? Excellent! Check all your answers with the key. If you find any problems in doing the formative test, it would be better for you to listen and answer the questions again. For you who are satisfied with the answers, please do Unit 3, Module 5. Turn off your tape and go back to the module.
listening to point five point three a example one. Did you know that the nearly three quarters of the surface of the Earth is covered with water? They are the first oceans like the Atlantic and the Pacific, and smaller seas like the South China Sea and the Red Sea. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Listening to point five point three B passage one. Many teachers don't realize that their behavior in the classroom reflect their belief about gender roles. In a study involving teachers of elementary schools, it was revealed that the teacher almost always appointed the boys to more chairs and desks and to carry books. Whereas the girls had the duties of replacing the fresh flowers and cleaning the classroom every morning. Do you have any difficulties in listening to the materials? If so, you need to listen again. If you have understood the whole examples, do the exercises. Follow what the module asks you to do the next activities. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Listening to point five point three C exercise one. One. Walt Disney can easily be called the leader in animation. Some of his world famous works included Pinocchio, Snow White, and the Seven Dwarfs, and the award winning Lion King. Two. The bonds between families of elephants are very strong. They have their own way of communicating. Sometimes, when elephants meet, they give the familiar trumpeting sounds in greeting. When all is well, they give a continuous, deep, rumbling sound. Three. There are several kinds of fire extinguishers depending on the contents. The containers are color coded according to their contents, such as red for water. White for foam, black for CO2, and purple for powder. Four. There are around 20 tribes of Native American people still living in North America. They include the famous tribes such as the Cherokee, Navajo, and Apache, as well as the not so famous tribes like Chippewa and Paiute. Five. Pierre and Marie Curie were true scientists who would do anything and stop at nothing to reach their goals. In the four years it took for them to discover radium, they worked in a small shed with no tools but an old chair, an old table, and a small stove with leaking ceiling above them. Listening to point five point three D exercise two. On January seventeen, nineteen ninety five. The city of Kobe, Japan, was hit by a very violent quake. It was one of the biggest earthquakes that ever hit the city. Houses were shaken apart, bridges and roads collapsed as if made from wood. Buildings collapsed, and electricity and gas lines were broken. More than five thousand and three hundred people were killed. Listening to point five point three e exercise three. Hollywood had its golden age during the nineteen thirties and nineteen forties with its world famous movies that were acclaimed as outstanding movies. 
Among the famous movie stars, we can list names like Vivian Leigh, Elizabeth Taylor, and Marilyn Monroe, as well as Clara Gable, Rock Hudson, and Richard Barton. Listening 2.5.3F, Exercise 4. Birds of prey, which are often referred to as raptors, consist of nearly 300 species, including eagles, hawks, buzzards, and falcons. While these aerial predators are all quite obviously birds of prey, many other kinds of birds which hunt for food are not squash and shrikes. For example, are both predators, but neither is a raptor. The owls, which have as keen eyes and sharp claws as the eagles, are also not true birds of prey. Listening 2.5.3G, Exercise 5. The amount of oxygen your body needs varies according to how active you are at any time. For example, an average male adult at complete rest breathes in about 3.75 liters of air every minute. This air contains 750 cc of oxygen of which he uses about one-third. If he were running to catch a bus, he would need a lot more oxygen as his muscles are working harder. He would then take in about 15 times as much air and use more of the oxygen in it. Listening 2.5.3H, Exercise 6. When metals such as iron and steel are exposed to air and water vapor, the surface of the iron is covered with truss. Have you ever left a new nail out in the yard? If it is the rainy season, after a few days in the rain, the nail will be covered with brownish substance. The brownish substance does not stick closely and is not as strong as the iron. It is called iron oxide or rust. Listening 2.5.3i, exercise 7. A simple skill or action, although seems automatic, has to be learned. Before being able to walk, a baby has roll over, crawl, and sit, and finally stand. The feet are then placed widely apart to give a stable base and the baby tries to take her first step. She then learns to balance more efficiently and then does the more complex coordination tasks of running, jumping and avoiding objects. Throughout life, a human learns more and more complex tasks and coordination movements. Listening 2.5.3J, Exercise 8 during the second half of his career, William Shakespeare wrote many tragedies, such as Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, Macbeth, and Antony and Cleopatra. These are very profound and disturbing works, but they establish Shakespeare as the world's greatest dramatist. Many people believe Shakespeare himself was going through a dark period in his life at that time. Listening 2.5.3K, Exercise 9 Geologists are very interested in studying about earth layers and rock structures. The similarity of rock structure across continents is of great importance to them. For instance, when Australia and Antarctica were once joined, the minerals found in South Australia may also be found under the ice in Antarctica. Listening 2.5.3L, Exercise 10 Not understanding a culture can lead to a serious misunderstanding among people of different cultures. When a native English speaker speaks to us and we avoid eye contact with him or we look downward, 
the native speaker may think that we are hiding something from him. This may cause him to think that we are a dishonest person, and he doesn't want to carry on further relationship with us, for fear of being deceived or cheated. Have you understood the materials we've just discussed? If not, please rewind this cassette and listen again. If you have understood, you can go on to another side of this cassette to discuss the next materials. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Listening 2.5.3M, Formative Test 3, Passage 1 Timber is in such great demand because it is readily available, easily cut, shaped and joined, and has an attractive appearance. Timber is divided into two main groups, softwoods and hardwoods. Softwoods come from needle-bearing trees such as fir, hemlock, pine, redwood and spruce. Hardwoods come from both leaves trees, such as beech, birch, maple, oak, and poplar. Listening 2.5.3M, Passage 2 Different cultures have different ways of looking at men and women rules. When Peter, an American, went to India for his research, he became friendly with Mona, a fellow researcher and the daughter of famous professor. One evening, man's family invited Peter to dinner at their home. After serving the meals, Mona, his mother and sister returned to the kitchen, leaving Peter to talk with her father. As a compliment for the lovely dinner, Peter invited Mona to have dinner at his apartment. Surprisingly, Mona got very angry and seemed insulted. Apparently, inviting a girl to a man's apartment is considered rude in her culture. Listening 2.5.30, Passage 3 Charles Dickens was probably the greatest and most popular novelist of his time. He was born on the 7th of February, 1812, and he died of a sudden stroke on the 9th of June, 1870. Between 1861 and 1870, he wrote his masterpieces like Oliver Twist, Nicholas Nickleby, David Copperfield, and Great Expectations. Many of his novels expose injustices of Victorian England, poverty, prisons, and abandoned children. This is the end of Module 5, Listening 2. Well, that was our discussion on Module 5 about prose passages. If you think you don't understand the materials, please replay this cassette and listen again. If you have understood it, you can continue to Module 6. Turn up your tape and go back to the module. We come to Module 6. This module discusses about debates and consists of two topics that are divided into two units. Unit 1 discusses about talk show and on the second unit you can study testimony. Now let's discuss the first unit about talk show. Listening 2.6.1a, Example 1. Okay, good morning viewers. Our topic today is sex education for children. Should our children be taught sex? Of so, how and by whom? With us today is an expert in sex education, 
a man I'm sure you all know very well, Dr. Boyka Nugraha. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Indy. Very nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Doctor. Well, what do you think about this topic? If you have understood the whole examples, do the exercises. Follow what the module asks you to do the next activities. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Listening 2.6.1b, Exercise 1a. So tell me, Miss Cruz, are you going to marry Tom? Well, it looks that way. <laughs> we've been together for a couple of years, and we've had great times together. Do you think you and him belong together? Yes, I do think so. We're so good for each other. And when do you plan to have the wedding? We haven't discussed that detail yet but probably in the beginning of the next year. Well, you certainly have our best wishes, Miss Cruz. Thank you. Listening 2.6.1c, Exercise 2. Good morning, Miss Roberts. It's such a pleasure to have you here in 30 minutes with Indy. Good morning. I'm honored to be here. And please call me Julia. Thank you, Julia. Well, I understand this is not your first time in Indonesia. Oh no, absolutely not. I've been to your country several times for several different purposes. Can you tell us when you visited our country? Um, the first time was in 1999, the second in 2001. The third was the following year, so this is the fourth times. Wow, okay. So what were your purposes in visiting Indonesia? You said there were different purposes? Right. The first time was just for vacation in Bali. The second and the third times were to make a documentary film with WWF, that's World Wildlife Fund, about the orangutans in Borneo. And this time it's for another vacations. And I caught you to be our guest here. <laughs> that's right. Listening 2.6.1D, Exercise 3A. Welcome back to 30 Minutes with Indy. Today our special guest star is Julia Roberts, star of so many hit movies which I'm sure you've enjoyed watching. One thing that not many of us may know is that Julia is active not only in Hollywood movies, but in another activity as well. Let's continue our talk with her. Okay, Julia, you said that your second and third visits to Indonesia were to make a documentary movie in Borneo. Could you tell us about them? Sure. I work with WWF to save and conserve endangered animals. During my work there, I got quite fascinated with orangutans. So, when a movie was going to be made about them, I begged the producers to let me be the host and narrator. And they let me. So that's how I came to Borneo. I've seen the movies and was quite incented by them. Now, I'm giving the opportunity to the audience if anyone wants to ask questions. Did Julia please do so? Yes, miss? Excuse me, I'd like to know what made you so attracted to orangutans and not other animals like tigers or rhinos? That's a good question, because I don't really know myself. I guess it's because they are so like us humans, um, and their intelligence just amazes me. It'd be such a pity if they should die out, become instinct, you know. How did you feel during the making of the documentaries? It was great. I mean, it was simply the most wonderful experience of my life. Sure, I was a bit scared at first, but once you know them, uh, they are just lovely creatures. Well, audience and viewers at home, I'm sure you still want to chat with Julia. But unfortunately, this is all the time we have, Julia. Thanks so much for joining us today. Enjoy your fourth stay in Indonesia. 
I sure will. Thank you. Bye. Listening 2.6.1e, exercise 4a. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our program, Beyond the Classroom. As usual, in this program, we will load at some innovative ways that adults can teach children to be a good citizens. This way are all done beyond the classroom. With us today are two experts in education, Mr. Afrahman, an expert in child and teenage learners in Indonesia, and Ms. Joyce Summers, an English teacher from the States who has been teaching Indonesian children here for over 12 years. Good morning, Mr. Afrahman, Ms. Joyce Summers. Good morning, morning Desi. Good, Good morning, morning viewers. viewers. Pa Arif, let me start with you. Why don't you think children need to be taught beyond the classroom? Aren't they getting enough education at school? Well, no, I don't mean that. They're getting enough education at school, but the education does not really touch their lives. Can you explain that, please? It's like this. In the classroom, they'll learn from books about people and places and times they're not really connected with. But beyond the classroom, we can teach them important values which are related to their real life. Ibu Joy, what is your opinion about this matter? I certainly agree with Pa'arif. After 12 years, I've seen that Indonesian students have too many things to learn, most of which are not relevant to their real lives. By teaching them outside of the classroom, we can make them learn more relevant things. And by that, you hope to make better citizens out of them? Yes, we are very optimistic about that. I'm with you, Pa'arif. Dear viewers, we have seen the optimism of these two teachers. But what actually is their program? We'll know more about it after the commercial break. Stay tuned. Listening 2.6.1F, Exercise 5A. Okay, viewers, we have listened to interactive calls from two viewers, from Bandung and Medan. Now, that's another call coming in. Hello, please state your name and address. Hello, I'm Tini from Bali. Hello, Ibu Tini. Just state your questions, please. Thanks. I just want to ask both Pa'arif and Ibu Joy what they plan to do in remote areas such as where I live. How can their program be applied in areas with so limited facilities? Right, Pa'arif, Ibu Joy, who wants to answer first? Well, so far we have surveyed some areas and certainly there are some places in Palu which are suitable for this program. We hope we can start early next year. In the meantime, we are still surveying other places as well. That's right. And may I add that we have conducted this program in some remote areas in Java with significant results. This shows that with limited facilities, this program can indeed succeed. You are welcome to visit our website at www.beyondclass.com and see what we have done. Thank you, Pa'arif, Ibu Joy, Butini. I hope you are satisfied. And viewers, unfortunately, this is all the time we have today. We'll see you again next week with another program and other guests. Till then, take care and goodbye. Have you done all the exercises in Unit 1, Module 6? Do you have any problems? If don't, please do the formative test 1. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Now listen to Dian and Ferina, formative test 1. Listening 2.6.1F, formative test 1. Tell me, Ferina, how do you cope with your problems of having a child with special needs? I think you are a very brave mother. Thank you, Dian. Maybe I am brave, but at times I also feel depressed. Don't get me wrong, please. I love being a mother, and I love my son very, very much. 
But you know. Yes, yes, I can imagine. But from what I've read, a child with special needs like your son has to have continuous care and special attention, doesn't he? How do you manage that with all your activities? Well, yes, you are right. I put him in a special school of something more. They are pretty good, and it seems that my son enjoys going there. He's shown considerable development, and I'm very happy about it. Well, viewers, we have heard Farina talk a little bit about her life with her son. I'm sure you have questions of your own you'd like to ask her. You can call us at this number 021-565-5676. State your name and address and give the questions or comment briefly. This is the end of Unit 1, Module 6, Listening 2. Now, please do Unit 2, Module 6. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Now we will continue to Unit 2 about testimony. Now listen to the example 1, listening 2.6.2a. The view that women can't rule the country has never been proven. On the contrary, the opposite is true in many cases. One of them is Queen Elizabeth I of England, who reigned for almost 45 years during the second half of the 16th century. Now listen to exercise 1, listening 2.6.2b. How can you say that the province of Central Slovakia is unsafe? Well, it's so obvious. You just have to read or listen to the news of what has been going on in Pozo lately. All the shootings and torture of the civilians. And have you heard? Last night there were two bombings and shootings in two churches in Palu, the capital city. Yeah, I read about them. But don't you think they are just blow up of the news? I mean, I have friends in Palu and they never tell me anything. That's because they don't want to worry you. Believe me, it's quite scary out there. My relatives told me that actually there has always been tension between the Muslim and Christians. Really? Well, in that case, I'll be really careful. I have a meeting in Palu next week. Good luck. Now listen to exercise 2, listening 2.6.2c. John, I really think men and women have the same chance and ability to become famous designers, just as they do to become famous singers. I don't think I can agree with you. Look at designer schools. 99% of the students are women. If you can't find male students, I bet they're sissies. That's what happens at school. But look at the famous designers we have today, both in Indonesia and abroad. I can mention quite a lot of male names. Yeah, like Oscar Lawalata, or Ivan Gunawan, or Gianni Versace. That just proves my point. They're either sissies or gay. But what about Prayudi or Ajinotonogoro? or Dior or Legevelt, to name just a few. They are all males, normal males, and very famous. In fact, I can say that they are more famous than many of their female counterparts. Okay, okay, I agree. So, probably, although in designer school most of the students are females, in the actual profession, male and female designers have equal opportunities. Now listen to exercise 3, listening 2.6.2D. Do you know the Minamata disease? I think people in the Buyat area are suffering from it. How can you be sure? Experts have said the contamination of the waters have not exceeded the danger level yet. 
And furthermore, only a few people are suffering from disease which looks like the Minamata disease. That's true, but I don't really believe what the papers say. It might be the case that the experts did find something, but they didn't tell the press because they are afraid the people might panic. Why? Wouldn't it be better if the people know the truth? Oh, they will. Have you read today's newspaper? The head of New Moon Minahasa Camp is being deported back to the U.S. Really? Oh, well, I guess you're right then. Now listen to exercise 4, listening 2.6.2e. So, Mr. Hendrawan, you are a key witness in this case. Do you swear to tell the truth? Yes, I do. Tell me, how do you know the defendant, Mr. Suryo? I met him the first time in Monas Bank in 2002. What were you doing there? I was going to open an account, and then he approached me. What did he say to you? He asked whether I was interested in a certain business. What kind of business was it exactly? He said it was a foreign currency business which can double our saving in just a few weeks. So what did... Now listen to exercise 5, listening 2.6.2F. Vic, have you been following the news about the Indonesian workers abroad? Yes, especially the ones in Malaysia. Why? I read that they were going to give testimonies to the police. What about? About the torture they received from their master and the cruelty that they had to endure. That should be interesting. I really believe that those cruel, heartless people should be punished as soon as possible. Wow! You're really concerned about them, aren't you? Of course. If those workers can testify to the cruel action that they receive, the names of the employers and police, the marks of the cruelty, I think we have a strong case. Yeah, let's hope all the inhuman acts will soon stop. Now listen to exercise 6, listening 2.6.2G. Leah, I think you're exaggerating about the crime thing. No, I'm not, Tom. I know for sure that people are now selling drugs to elementary school kids. Many people say that, but nobody can prove anything. So whoever does that is still not caught. So you think so? I can get the proofs. I can give testimonies they need to put those people in jail. You're getting emotional, Ria. Are you sure you can give testimonies to the police? Of course, I'm sure. My sister almost becomes one of the victims. Really? How did it happen? Someone gave her a bunch of candies, saying it was a promotional advertisement. Luckily, my sister smelled a strange smell when she wanted to try one of the candies. She gave it to me and I brought it directly to my uncle's laboratory. Oh yeah, I remember your uncle is a pharmacist, right? And what did he find? It contained a trace of marijuana. Santi, my sister, said quite a lot of her friends had received and tried those candies. She said some of them had been acting strangely. Now, what are you planning to do? I'm going to collect samples of those candies and have them analyzed. I'm going to ask those kids to identify the people who gave them the candies, and I'm going to tell the police. Well, I'm willing to help if you need me. Thanks. Have you done all the exercises in Unit 2, Module 6? Do you have get any problems? If any, you need to listen again before you do the formative test too. Turn off your tape and go back to the module. Now listen to Arya and Tuti, 
formative test 2, listening 2.6.2H. So you think that the fire at the house of the cabinet member was deliberately set? Yes, I'm sure about it. How can you be sure? I've met several people who said that they saw someone, a man, leaving the house just a few minutes before the fire. That can be just a coincidence. Quite a few people live near the house, don't they? Moreover, the police have declared that the cause of fire was the explosion of an LPG tank in the kitchen. Believe me, Arya, the cabinet member is not exactly a favorite person among his neighbors and acquaintances. I can get you some people who will willingly testify against him in terms of his social conduct and relationship. Okay, let's say he's not very well liked. But does that make people hate him enough to burn his house? And these people you said, are they willing to give testimonies in the court if this developed into a case? I can guarantee they are. Hmm. I can just see how this will make a wonderful headline news in our paper. This is the end of module 6. Now, do you think that you have understood the materials from module 1 to module 6? If you have any problems in studying these tools, you can contact us through English Education Study Program on Faculty of Teacher and Training Education of Universitas Terbuka. And remember always, prepare yourself for the final test. Good luck! <laughs>